What up, DJ Mike Dub here. Um, it's 2017. I want to thank everybody who subscribed to my channel in 2016. Um, I think I started out 2016 with like 40 subscribers and I'm up to like 176. So thank everybody for subscribing. Um, this year's goal, I want to try to get a thousand. I know I have a lot of work to put in in order to earn the subscribers, but I'm going to do it. Um, I also have another goal to get, I'm going to say 15 clients in Georgia this year. Um, not just bars and clubs that I've been doing in the past years, but just like private parties. Um, definitely want to get my clientele count up and um, earn more money on private parties. Um, not very well known in the area, but got to do what I got to do to get my name out there. Um, this episode of Shop Talk, we are going to put in LED lights in my turntables. So check it out. All right, so when you buy the kit, um, this kit is from Ice Cold Customs. Um, it comes with LEDs to put inside of, you know, the strobe, the 45, 33, the, when you locked in on pitch and your pop-up light, that's what comes in. Now you can order these separate, but when you order the halos, it comes with those bulbs as well. Um, these are the halo strips. Comes with two. Um, these are the long LED. This goes around the platter or around the edge. And this goes in the uh, pitch control under it. Um, and here's the power supply. So let's get started. All right, some of the tools you're gonna need is um, a screwdriver of some sort. I use a battery operated drill, but it has a torque. I call it impact gun, but it has like a, a torque transmission on it where it won't drill the screw down real hard. I normally leave it on like three or four. So it'll put the, you know, the screw in tight enough but not over tighten the brake circuit boards or anything like that. Um, a pair of snips. They supply you with soldering or solder <laughs> and you're going to need a soldering iron. Um, I think I got that from Walmart but you know they sell them at uh, AutoZone. Uh, I would say Radio Shack but they're out of business. Um, rubbing alcohol to clean your surfaces because you're going to need to Make sure there's no dust or debris or dirt uh, where you're going to mount the double-sided tape to for the LEDs. Um, and that's about it. Alright, um, clear your work area. Oh, I'm going to need that. All right, so take your, your vinyl off or whatnot. I'm gonna just sit it on this other one. Um, all you gotta do is lift up on these two holes. Sometimes you might use a, like a screwdriver or something and just kind of tap on this and it'll loosen up the, uh, I don't know what you wanna call it, the seal that it has made from sitting on there so long. You want to take off this first uh, plastic plate. It's like five or six screws. You're not going to need this anymore. Um, when you mount the LED lights, uh, basically this edge would be in the way. Now Ice Cold Customs I believe sells a clear um, plastic plate. Um, I want to say it's like $30 or whatnot. These these set of turntables are more than likely going to stay in my house. I have another set that I use when I do my gigs. Um, so I'm not really concerned with anything spilling in or any need to cover that up. Um, Next you want to probably clean the surface or the first the first thing you're going to do is mount your um, 
power supply. Um, this is the circuit board. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. All right, so this is the circuit board or the power supply for the turntable and there's two screws in it. So you're basically gonna loosen those up. Make sure your turntable is unplugged, there's no power. <clears throat> Probably want to do that before you unscrew it. Alright, so what you want to do now is turn it over. Your contact points are going to be white and blue, which this is weird because mine both are black. I guess whoever had this the first time um changed out the power cable i guess which makes no sense because i don't think anyone opened these up before i did because they were practically brand new from who i bought them from um but anyway um the blue wire on your power supply is going to go to the blue and your brown wire is going to go to the white well this one is black with a white stripe on it i don't know if you can see it so you want to flip this over so you can get to the circuit side. Um, a little trick I saw a guy do online was he used a zip tie. I mean, if you have somebody who can just hold this for you and then you can solder the two points, cool. But another cool trick is to um, get the little supplied zip ties they gave you. Go through one of the screw holes. I'm going to do two zip ties and, and loop them in, one inside the other one, just so it's not so tight to go around the um, spindle, and voila, you got a way to um, hold your spindle, or hold the circuit board. Alright, give me a sec, I need to move my soldering iron over. Alright, so I'm going to let my soldering iron get to its maximum uh, temperature. Uh, what you want to do now is go ahead and place your power supply. You want to push it, of course it's going to be on the bottom of the platter, um, or the turntable on the bottom, like right of the surface. Um, push it like kind of against the circuit board, because when you come back and you put the LEDs around, you don't want it to be touching the, the side where you're going to be sticking your LEDs to. Um, all right, so that should be warm enough. Get your solder. And what you wanna do is add a little solder to the places where you're going to be putting your wires to. So I add a little solder right there. Now add some soda right there. All right. So remember, blue to blue, brown to white. In my case, it's black with a white stripe. Um, I want my wires to kind of go out this way because that's how the other wires are going out. Um, that way I know I won't be putting them back in a tight spot. Remember, brown to white. All you gotta do is heat up that solder you just put on there. I'll probably come back and add even more solder if I can't get this to, well, yeah, that's pretty secure, but I'm going to add a little bit more solder on top just to make sure it's well covered.
All right. And then we do the blue. I'm right-handed, so of course I won't want the soldering iron to be in my right hand because it's my most dominant hand, but in this case, it kind of is what it is. Um, heat up the solder. Once it gets liquefied, make sure your wire goes on. And voila, you're done. Um, I normally use like a, a sponge, a sand sponge and clean my soldering iron off when I'm done with it. Just get all that solder off. You can do that before or after or before you get ready to do a new job, but copper tip, clean soldering iron. Um, I don't think I'm going to need my soldering iron anymore, so I'm going to unplug it and get it out of the way. Alright, so now, get your little wire snips, snip off that zip tie. Turn your circuit board back around and put your screws back in the location. As you can see, the black wire just kind of tucked under the circuit board. Make sure it's not being pinched or anything and there's a little wiggle room. Get your two screws. Again, I got it, you know, it's on three on the uh, torque transmission so I won't break the soldering board. And I'm sure you heard all that clicking noise. So, all is well. Oh, all right. So the next job you want to do is you got to take out the screws right here, right here, and the three screws on the spindle. We're doing this so we can put this black wire from the power supply up under the soldering board and have it come out right here. You'll see later on, you're gonna put the, um, the input or the, uh, the LED color, I don't know what you wanna call this thing, cause it's not the power supply. The IR output, whatever. It's gonna basically stop right here and then you can just plug in the black wire right there. So yeah. So you're gonna take out your screws. Pull up on the board, you see it's coming up. So what you wanna do is remember kinda do a little test fit, see where you're gonna end up having a power supply. Basically you want this edge to go on the left side of this black um, terminal and then the wire can just go up under the circuit board. All right, you're gonna kind of like, that's kind of how you want it to end up being where it's gonna plug in right there. Make sure everything is still sitting on it nice and you don't have the wire like under something. Um, more or less the spindle would be the only thing it would be under where it's not touching back down to where the screw holes need to be at. Then you just put your screws back in.
this bit is a little bit too big for these screws, but I don't ever plan on moving it. Now I have replaced the spindle and a set of turntables that I got from a pawn shop. Um, so make sure that's sturdy. You know, replacing the spindle is pretty easy. You can order them on eBay or whatnot if your spindle goes out. Um, or the motor. It's a pretty easy job. Alright, so your screws are back in. Test to make sure nothing's moving. Alright, from here, you can probably go ahead and get your paper towel and your alcohol and clean all your surfaces. You're going to clean around where you're going to stick the LEDs to. Clean off the bottom plate where you're going to stick your new power supply and IR module or whatever that thing's called. Because both of these items have a piece of double sided tape on them. Yeah, so you want to put it you want to put this black part wherever you make sure you still have room on the edge so you can put your LED strip around the edge. So it might not be the best idea maybe to put it flush with the board. You're going to kind of cat a corner it sort of kind of so you can make sure there's room. All right, I'm about to go get some paper towels so I can clean so I can clean all the surfaces. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna clean the surface at the bottom where this, so this double-sided tape can stick to it, get all the dust. Um, I'm gonna clean this edge where I'll be coming back around with the LED strip. Make sure there's no oil or anything. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all the rest of the surface area around here just because since the platter is off, Good housekeeping purchase. Look at all that dust. Now that I'm, I'm basically taking this dust cover off, I might go on eBay and find like a dust cover um, to put on my turntables when I'm not using them. So the dust won't go down into the crack in the LED. Or I might not. I don't know. Alright, so from here I'm going to take the tape off. I just want to make sure I leave myself some room to get around here, more or less. So I think I have. That's not going to go anywhere now. Alright. So this end is the one that's going to go up under the uh, pitch control, and then the rest of this is going to go around the platter. So I'm just going to kind of stick this in this hole. And this is basically where I'm going to start sticking the uh, LED to the, to the edge. I'm going to just take off a little bit at a time. Just so you know. Alright. My strategy to this is to make the edge of the bottom of the LED sit on this uh, metal part. Because you don't want it too high because then the platter won't spin. You don't want it low because then your LEDs won't shine out. So what I found the best is to just make it basically sit right on that edge. And then, of course, stick the rest of the double-sided tape down. Another easy way is to go ahead and mount it, I mean, you know, put it in so it's naturally <clears throat> laying where it's going to be. Don't be too scared. If you don't stick it to where you want it, you can always just kind of Pull it up and push it back down. It's no big deal. It's just double sided tape.
All right, you're not gonna really trip on this slack right here because <clears throat> you're going to turn the turntable over, flip it around or whatnot, and pull it through. So that's not gonna be like the end location of where it's gonna be. Something else you might wanna think about is get your little extra double-sided tape. This little black thing is a sensor where you control what color or the effects the light has. Um, I bought some carpet tape, not only for not only for this light, this sensor, but I'm going to put it in different locations for this cover because obviously, you know, this moves up. This is not like I didn't paint my actual turntable; it's just a cover. So this is the um, indoor/outdoor double-sided carpet tape. It's really thin. I didn't want the 3M double side tape because it was so thick and it would, you know, have it lift up some. And the thinner the tape, the more natural it will look. So basically, cut you off a piece of tape and stick it to the bottom of this little sensor and then put it at the bottom of the uh, turntable so it won't move. You can still, you know, change the colors through the little hole in the uh, platter. Alright, so what I'm going to do from here, which I should have already done, is test. So I'm going to plug it in. Plug my turntable in. Or maybe it just needs to be turned on. Okay. So it flickers, so you need to turn it on. It's not going to come directly on right away. Voila. And like I said, this is the little sensor. It allows you to change the colors. You just shoot the remote control to it. White. Now I need to um, flip the turntable over and put the LED strip into the little tone arm slot. So I'm going to cut the power. Make sure it's off. So, and what I found is an easy way to do this is to use your cover. You want to pull that off, and this off the little felt pad. This is this little slide. And use your cover. If you don't have your cover, you can use a pillow or whatnot. You just want to make sure you don't damage the uh, tone arm. Or if you have like a pad of memory foam or something. Something really soft that you can put down so you won't damage your tone arm. Slowly flip this guy over. And unscrew stuff. Basically, you want to unscrew the four feet. Then you have a bunch of screws that you will have to unscrew to get this rubber undercover off. This is why I use a drill instead of a screwdriver.
but now you want to just get yourself a leverage on the area and start pulling up and eventually it will come up this screw was being a pain in the ass and didn't want to come out but oh well it's out now so basically from here just lay this down out of the way this wire that you push through you're going to pull it on through this black wire is my ground I grounded it to this screw right here um, so far it's been working pretty well um, I do have a little bit of ground noise so I was trying to figure out if there's another or a better place for me to ground it to um, maybe I need to sand I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about it. All I gotta do is turn my mixer down and I don't get the little blah 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 every now and again. Alright, so this is the white LED that I've already changed out. It was green and I changed it to a white. You want to clean your surface because this is the side that you're going to stick your LED to with some alcohol. Give it a second, let it dry. <clears throat> All right, so my method is, there's three LED lights on each side and then there's this little um, bridge where you can cut it and then put the little, this little, put the four prongs on there and you know, turn the lights on again. So you basically put your tone arm, or not your tone arm, your pitch control slider at zero where it's going to click and then put that put it in the middle of course again I said there's three LED lights on this side three on that side so all right that should be dry it's not dry get a dry part of you all right so that's in the middle. I got three lights on each side. It's sliding. Actually, it's a little bit rubbing too much on that end. Now it's good. Push it down. Make sure it's got good contact. And put everything back. What I know I'm going to do is put my screw on, the, on my bit and then push this through the O-ring and then push it down to the screw hole. Alright, so we're going to do that for the next side. Put the screw on. I magnetized it, or this bit is magnetized. Um, push it through the old ring. Push in the screw hole. Voila, magic. Make sure it's tight. Now, all I gotta do is put the cover back on and put all the screws back in.
my battery's going dead. But we're going to take a pause for the calls because um, I got to charge my battery. All right, so now I want to put my double-sided tape and, well, gotta mount two things. I gotta go ahead and mount this. So I can't remember if I cleaned that off or not, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean it again. I'm gonna go ahead and stick my tape on this wire. Make sure it's sticking good. And, Push this down so it doesn't move around and find a good location So I kind of found out where I want to stick this one. So I got to take the backing off for the tape. <clears throat> As you see this stuff is really thin. But I'm going to push this wire kind of up under the circuit board, up under those circuits. Put it right here. So now I should be able to, when the platter is on, all right, Houston, we got a problem. See if this is any better now. Still touching somewhere. Let me check and see if it's the platter or I still feel it's not moving as smooth as it could. So, all right. So I'm all done. Um, I got the little issue fixed with the with this platter. Um, I think I showed it on the last shot, but anyway, all finished. Everything back together. They're on white, as you can see. And they're plenty bright. Got to do a little clay cable maintenance. Alright. As you see. All done. Um, I got them on white right now. As you can probably tell. Everything's back put together. Um, like I said before. I had to adjust. Like around this edge right here. Because it was up a little bit too high. But now. As you can see, they spin quite nicely. So whenever you want to change the color, all you have to do is stop your platter, pull up your vinyl and you slip mat <clears throat> and change the color um, where did I put that little thing in? there you go right there screen You can make it fade. And maybe if I turn off my LEDs, you can see me even more. It's still light outside, so.
That might help a little better. Um, it has a fade and a strobe mode. I think I need to change the battery in this remote. And it has a music mode. Honestly, don't know what it's changing to right now, but So as you can see, it works. I think I need to change the battery in my remote because it doesn't work as soon as I press the button, but for the most part, it works. I don't know exactly. Let's see. I don't want to get any copyright infringements. But I'll play a little tune to see what it does to music. to me and easy breezy job put my slip mats back on these are uh, tablecloth slip mats by Dr. Sukiya pretty nice it's easy to um, the back spin on but yeah job done easy breezy all right so we're all done it only took about two hours to complete you know installing the lights on two turntables um i had a couple of djs hit me up on facebook and instagram asking could they ship me their turntables um was thinking about it definitely will have to open up a p.o box if you're interested in me installing leds um, in your turntables hit me up in the comments if i get enough people wanting me to install for them i'll definitely open up a p.o box so you can ship them out to me um hit the subscribe button hit the thumbs up button if you like what you saw i have feature shop talks on the way such as comparing the Chinese uplights versus the Chave and American DJ and the Slim Par uplights um, and just other DJ related topics. So again, if you're still here to the end, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.